Welcome, friends, dear sisters and brothers, dear friends, YMCA leaders, members, and volunteers. This is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. And let's rejoice and be glad in it. We are here today as a global family to celebrate our God, the Almighty. We are here to celebrate the presence of God in this movement. We are here to give thanks to our Lord for all his mercy. On behalf of my president, Mrs. Patricia Pelton, I'd like to welcome you all to this special ecumenical Thanksgiving service. Welcome, Africa. Welcome, Asia and Pacific. Welcome, Europe. Welcome, Latin America. Welcome, Middle East. Welcome, North America. Welcome to you all. Feel at home because this is the place that we have today to celebrate our unity. I invite you for a prayer. Our dear Heavenly Father, we gather before you today as your children from around the world in thanksgiving and supplication to you. We acknowledge your greatness in all the earth. All things were created by you and for you. We are in awe of your love demonstrated to us through the ultimate sacrifice of your son, Jesus Christ, on Calvary. In him, we have the assurance of salvation of eternal life. We thank you for the unity we share as the YMCA movement. We are grateful that you have continued to fuel the mission of this great movement, enabling us for the good works that you prepare us for in advance. We are thankful for without you, this mission will not be alive today. We also thank you for your spirit who is alive in us, enabling us in our everyday journey of life at work. Lord, we acknowledge your goodness, particularly during this time of the global pandemic of COVID-19. Though we are weighed down by the impact it has on us as individual community and organization, we are thankful that in many ways you have sustained us. Lord, you know, yes, you know that we are hard pressed on every side, but not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. We are persecuted, but not abandoned. Struck down, but not destroyed. We always carry around on, your, on our body the death of Jesus Christ so that the life of Jesus may also be revealed in our body. We thank you for the way you have enabled us to respond to one another and to the community that we serve and trust that in your abundance you will sustain us. Dear Lord, we know that even when we don't see it, you are working. Even when we can't feel it, you are still working because you never stop. Yes, you never stop working and we thank you. We thank you for your presence with us in this time of joint worship and reflection and believe that we will be refreshed in our time with you. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Now, allow me to introduce to you my dear sister, Purity Kuguata, she is be the host of this celebration today. Purity is the staff of the Africa Alliance of YMCA based in Nairobi. Purity, welcome, and we are in your hands now. Thank you so much, Carlos, uh, for opening the service uh, for us. Um, and thank you to all of you who have joined us today. We, we are so thankful that you could fellowship with us today. 
And just as a disclaimer, this is a live service and we may experience some challenges with technology here and there, but we trust nevertheless um, that we will have a meaningful time of worship together. Please feel free to comment in the comment box um, uh, from which country or from which city you are joining us in this service. I see we have people from Germany, we have guys from Ghana and Scotland joining us. So please uh, feel welcome and, and feel in the presence of the Lord. Um, and as a symbol of God's presence, in, as our way of recognizing God's presence with us, we are going to light a candle, so please feel free to light a candle wherever you are um, in recognition that in 1 John 1.5, um, we are told that God is light and in him there is no darkness. Um, so please take some time to light a candle and please feel free to have the candle on the whole service and even beyond the service as a reminder that God is with us and he is always with us. And as we do that, as we light the candle, we will have um, a video running that uh, shows us that we are united in God's presence across the world. Um, and once you have lit your candle, please feel free uh, to still comment and uh, comment in the video below where you're watching from and say hi to the other participants. Abide with me, fast falls the eventide, the darkness deepens, Lord with me abide, when Thank you so much. We have um, guys from Canada, we have Romania, we have Sierra Leone, Hong Kong, Delma, Chicago, India. We really are a big gathering of, of uh, brothers and sisters from all over the world. And I welcome you and I trust that this will be a meaningful time for all of us together. 
We will now have our scripture reading and our reading today will come to us in English and in Cantonese and in Spanish in celebration of the diversity that we have within the YMCA. The scripture will be displayed for us on the screen for us to follow together. Um, and so we'll, we'll get straight to it. We will have Catherine Shan from the Hong Kong YMCA and Mike Thomas from the uh, YMCA of the USA um, who will take us through the scripture reading. As the deer pants for streams of water, so my soul pants for you, my God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When can I go meet with God? My tears have been my food day and night, while people say to me all day long, where is your God? These things I remember as I pour out my soul, how I used to go to the house of God under the protection of the mighty one with shouts of joy and praise among the festive throng. Why, my soul, are you downcast? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Savior and my God. My soul is downcast within me. Therefore, I will remember you from the land of the Jordan, the heights of Hermon, from Mount Mazar. Deep calls to deep, in the roar of your waterfalls, all your waves and breakers have swept over me. By day the Lord directs his love, at night his song is with me, a prayer for the God of my life. I say to God, my rock, why have you forgotten me? Why must I go about mourning, oppressed by the enemy? My bones suffer mortal agony as my foes taunt me, saying to me all day long, where's your God? Why, my soul, are you downcast? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Savior and my God.我走夜已眼淚當食物為何在我裡面犯粗我的心你的波浪共逃漫过我身我的敵人辱罵我Our message speaker for today um, is Josh Histon. He's the chaplain of the YMCA of Greater Indianapolis in the USA. Please join me in prayer for Josh as he shares God's word with us today, uh, building on the scripture that we have just read. 
Dear God, we thank you for this day. Thank you for gathering us together. And thank you for Josh. Thank you that he would be willing to be with us today, to break bread with us, to share from your word, to encourage us. Um, and I pray that our hearts will be open and willing to receive your message to us. In Jesus' name I do pray. Amen. Welcome, Josh. Thank you, Purity. And hello, YMCA family. I bring you greetings from the YMCA of Greater Indianapolis in the United States. Also our board of directors and our CEO, Derek Stewart. I'm honored to bring you a short devotion today from Psalm 42 on hope and thanksgiving in times of adversity. I think we need to start by acknowledging we are all currently in a season of significant adversity, perhaps one of the biggest challenges of our lifetime. Three times in Psalms 42, verse 5, 6, and 11, the psalmist refers to his soul being downcast while going through a challenging season. Unfortunately, our natural human response in times of adversity is sometimes anxiety, fear, or even depression. I submit to you three things we need to remember to do when our soul feels downcast. Pray, remain thankful, and cling to hope. The first thing we need to remember to do when our soul feels downcast, like the psalmist in Psalm 42, is to simply pray. Some biblical scholars believe that Jesus had these very verses in Psalm 42 on his mind when he was praying before his arrest in the Garden of Gethsemane, the very place where he would eventually pray the founding verse of the YMCA, John 17, 21. See, Jesus was fully human. And the scriptures say, before he was about to be arrested and soon crucified, Jesus himself, quote, began to be sorrowful and troubled, end quote. When Jesus became sorrowful and troubled in the midst of his greatest challenge, he went directly to his Father in prayer. Jesus set a great example for us to learn from, that we should go to our Heavenly Father in prayer when we face our challenges. May we be YMCA leaders who pray in the midst of adversity. Secondly, we must remember to remain thankful in times of adversity. In the New Testament, we're instructed to be joyful always, to pray continually, and to give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for us in Christ Jesus. You see, all circumstances include both the good times and also the not so good times. I am currently going through a significant health challenge. And I've often thought of how to live out this verse and remain thankful in the midst of my challenge. While I'm not thankful for the illness itself, I'm extremely thankful for what I am learning through it, thankful for my family who loves me through it, and thankful for a heavenly father who is walking with me through it. You see, thankfulness is an attitude of the heart. May we be YMCA leaders who remain thankful in the midst of adversity. And finally, when our soul feels downcast, we need to remember to cling to hope. 
Psalm 42, 11 says, why are you downcast, O my soul? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise my Savior and God. You see, hope is not a good-hearted wish. Like, I hope my favorite team wins the championship. But rather, hope is how you live your life because you believe God will be true to his promises to us. You see, I have a peace regarding my health because he has said he has a plan to prosper me and not to harm me. Plans to give me hope and a future. And I will wholeheartedly believe in those promises. That is hope. None of us know what the future of the YMCA will look like after this global pandemic. But let's declare today that God is a way maker. And let's commit to putting our hope in God and trusting in his promises for ourselves, our families, and our YMCAs. May we be YMCA leaders who cling to hope in the midst of adversity. As I close, I want to remind you that the C in the YMCA is a person, and his name is Jesus. My prayer for us is that we would become fully alive, that he would become fully alive in each one of us, and that he would also become fully alive in the organization that we all love so much, the YMCA. May God truly bless you, your family, and your YMCA with his presence. Amen. Thank you so much, Josh, um, for that message. I'm personally, the, the point on the sea in the YMCA is a person and just the knowledge that that person has faced adversity and therefore can sympathize and empathize with us is such a great encouragement. Thank you so much, Josh, and God bless you as well. And I grant you grace even in, in your own health journey. Um, we will now have our own special lockdown version of the song Waymaker. Um, and this song, Waymaker, um, is brought to us by our global choir. And our choir has members from England, from Scotland, from Nigeria, from Togo, from Egypt, from Germany. And so let us join together with them in song.
services um, for the next three services or so. We will listen to testimonies from different area YMCAs. And these are testimonies of YMCA's responses to the COVID-19 pandemic so that we are able to pray together for the specific needs of these um, areas and to also give thanks um, for what God is doing through the work of the YMCA. Today we will have two testimonies. We will have a testimony from the Asia Pacific area, and we will also have a testimony from Europe, um, YMCA, the Europe area. I therefore would like to invite to the microphone Mr. Nam Bu Won from the Asia Pacific Alliance, and he will be followed short, soon after by Mr. Juan Iglesias from the Europe um, Area Alliance. Um, welcome, Nam. Thank you, Purity. As you know, the COVID-19 started in China at the end of last year and spread first to neighboring Asian countries. This means by now, most of Asian and Pacific countries have passed the peak of the pandemic, except a few countries. But there are still preventive measures in place in many countries limiting YMCA activities to a great extent. Many YMCAs in our region promptly responded to the urgent needs of our communities, particularly of the poor and marginalized people who became vulnerable to the pandemic and its effects. YMCAs of Sri Lanka were first active in mass distribution of food for the needy people during the lockdown for COVID-19. Cambodia YMCA has also reached the needy people, distributing tons of rice to hundreds of families. Many YMCAs in India are involved in food distribution, 
reaching more than 100,000 poor families, several YMCA started providing hot meals to the marginal communities. YMCA of Albay and other Philippine YMCAs engaged in supporting the healthcare professionals on the front lines by donating safety shields and masks. Chiang Mai YMCA of Thailand made thousands of face masks through its fair, share, fair trade initiatives for distribution to the people. The volunteers and staff of the YMCA of Myanmar organized nationwide campaigns to motivate people to wear masks and other hygiene practices. Korea YMCAs have joined hand together with more than 800 NGOs to form a coalition to combat the pandemic in Korea with strong advocacy towards government policy formulation. Several YMCAs of Japan, like Hiroshima YMCA, engaged in food distribution for distressed foreign students. Children and students of Singapore YMCA sent appreciation cards to thank migrant workers for their immense contribution to Singapore's growth. The youth of British YMCA Bangladesh volunteered to be frontliners taking the task of spraying germicide throughout their communities. Staff and volunteers of Nepal YMCA undertook programs for food distribution for the suffering villagers. YMCA of Australia delivered frontline services and programs in 640 communities across the country. The YMCAs in Hong Kong initiated support programs for the COVID-19 victims through their community centers, serving hundreds of elderly people with free lunch box, masks, and other supplies. In response to the pandemic, APAY organized a joint prayer meeting, inviting all the leaders and youth from our region. We also organized special national general secretaries meetings three times, trying to connect each other and share the difficulties and challenges in the spirit of solidarity and mutual care. In the meantime, APOI board recently decided to have all its standing committee meetings by Zoom and the APAY exco meeting will be held in early July by Zoom as well. Though financially difficult, APAY has contributed to YMCA Solidarity Fund from our Golden Anniversary Trust Fund. Finally, as, as well as importantly, with a view to exploring new normal and a new missional call, APAY will soon organize a mission review session on post-COVID-19 world and YMCA response. Thank you very much. Immediately after Asia, this dramatic journey of the pandemic continued and reached Europe. It reached uh, our shores and our countries from the Mediterranean region to the nations in the East, from Central Europe to Scandinavia, from the Caucasus across the English Channel, from the Balkans to the Baltic Sea. Over two million persons have been infected and uh, close to 170,000 have lost their lives. Our prayers have uh, remained with all of them in Europe and well, all those suffering around the world. This virus does not respect our borders, cultures and social conditions, religions or ages, not even different governmental approaches. Europe stopped for the first time in decades. Several generations had never experienced such an uncertain time in our continent. Interdependence and vulnerability. Very few times in our history, both worlds were so strongly connected. And again, new words became a habit for us, new concepts, and we started talking about unpredictable, 
spread, invisible enemy, mobility, social distance, crisis, new normal, and future. Across Europe, we've been listening to messages of leaders, governments, institutions, and scientists searching for answers. As Christians, we turn our eyes to God, praying in the confidence of his love, thanking him, seeking for protection, hope, and courage. Yes, the pandemic has affected many YMCs in Europe. The largest and the smallest associations, the federations and the centralized models, local YMCAs, national coordination structures, and international platforms. It has affected all of us. Since the very beginning of the crisis, our surveys show the impact on colleagues serving at all sorts of community projects and services. Staff have lost their jobs. Projects uh, were not able to continue. Venues and facilities had to close. It, it is affecting youth groups, accommodation programs, training sessions, camps. Also is affecting our sustainability at all levels and our relation with key stakeholders and our international partners. And yet, in the midst of this uncertainty, we have remained proud of belonging to this movement, proud of volunteers, staff, members, and partners. YMCA solidarity extending as an inspiring positive virus, reaching out to the most vulnerable and being a helping hand to the most needed. Most of our local YMCAs took action in their communities. It will take us a long time to refer to each of them and each of the actions that were carried by thousands of local YMCAs and national YMCAs across Europe. Internally, we have also developed new habits in communication. We were forced to update our technical capacities very quickly. Innovation is no longer an option. It's rather a need. Creativity is becoming the tool for relevance and impact. Virtual management meetings have increased, dozens of weekly online spaces at all levels. Remaining in contact with our beneficiaries is a daily goal, almost an obsession. Yes, we learned that it is possible to do peace work, leadership training, social inclusion, sports and recreation online. First class governance meetings and strategic decisions are possible. Keeping social distance and increasing effectiveness. We've been doing that under the leadership of our president, Mike Will, and the executive committee. Our daily morning prayers in the silence of home individual offices, but virtually connected among ourselves and with God. Our Wine Seal Connect platform literally burns every day with uh, over uh, 15 posts altogether by 1,600 members. In the last 30 days, we have had 5,600 reactions in the platform with 400 posts in this past month. In addition, webinars, weekly newsletters, project applications, statements, and advocacy work addressed to decision makers in the light of the crisis. And most important, conversations about the present and the future of our common movement have increased like never before. There is a sense of renewal and open questions about effective ways to coordinate our work, the use of our resources, and the adjustment of our structures at all levels. Reflections about the next steps in our common journey, strengthening our message and increasing our impact. Somehow the YMC is also searching for its own new normal. And this Thanksgiving service reminds us that we don't need to search too much to find our own way. Trust in the Lord and take in action. Thank you so much, uh, Juan, and thank you, Nam, for sharing um, of the experiences of both your areas. We are now going to go into a time of prayer um, for these two areas and also for our YMCA friends and communities around the world. And we are going to, um, we are going to share our prayers and messages of hope uh, 
um, on the comment section of, uh, of this video. So please take some time um, to reflect about the YMCAs that you know that are in the north, in the south, in the east, and in the west, or wherever you are. And then together we will share some prayers. So we will start our prayer time with thinking um, about the countries, the YMCAs, and the people to the north of wherever you are joining us this service uh, from. So think of who is in the north of where you are in terms of a community, a YMCA, and, and friends as well within the YMCA. And then share your, your prayer and your message of hope to them in the comment section. I see prayers um, to, for this YMCA Scotland and Iceland, and uh, a prayer that they would be kept safe. Please uh, continue to share your prayers on the Facebook comment section for the places and the people that are in the north of where you are. We have a prayer for the YMCA of Germany, uh, Norway, Sweden, and Denmark for the sustainability of their activities. We also have uh, prayers for Germany, France, and Scandinavia. And we also have a prayer for the migrants who are most affected in India. So we will continue with the prayers and now we will see, we will move to the east. And again, I, I welcome you to share your prayers and messages of hope on the comment section of the Facebook Live. And so now we are moving to the east. Think of countries, YMCAs and communities that are in the east of where you are. And let's share prayers and messages of hope with them in the comment section of the Facebook Live video. We have prayers coming in for the city of Mumbai. Um, we have a prayer for Africa. We also have a prayer being sent out for the daily wage workers and the elderly who are vulnerable to COVID-19. We also have special prayers and messages of hope to Belarus, Russia, Ukraine, India, and Japan. We also have a prayer for mercy and grace for the YMCAs in India. We also have prayers for Australia and New Zealand, and prayers for Italy, Spain, and France. There's also a prayer for the YMCA, uh, Peru volunteers and staff, as well as Hong Kong, Korea, and Taiwan.
and a special prayer and a message of hope for those who are in poverty and are most affected. And also a prayer for the YMCA staff who've lost their jobs. We will now move to the West and continue in the same uh, spirit and reflection. Um, let's together think um, of countries, YMCAs and communities who are in the West of where we are and continue to share our prayers and messages of hope with them in the comment section of uh, our Facebook live video. We have prayers coming in for the UK um, and specific prayers for YMCA chaplains in the UK. We have a prayer for YMCA in Birisiri, Bangladesh. And a prayer even for decision makers in government institutions. We also have a prayer and a message of hope being sent out for young people in Romania. The leadership of the France YMCA for special strength during this time. And a prayer for the people of YMCA Lithuania. For the staff. Um, and volunteers who have um, lost their jobs in Canada and in the USA, a prayer for them as well. And a prayer for area governance and staff and staff teams. We will now move to the south um, in, as, as we conclude. And once again, let us think of countries, of YMCAs, communities that are in the south of where we are and share our prayers and messages of hope for them in the comment section of the video. There is a prayer um, for, YM, for a YMCA in ups, upstate New York, a prayer for all the young people in the front line fighting COVID-19. Um, the YMCA in upstate, upstate New York have had to cancel their summer camp. And I know this is an experience for many of us, and many of our YMCAs. So prayer for, um, that situation and how we manage and how we adjust. And we also have a prayer for victims of a super cyclone affecting India and Bangladesh. And a prayer for African YMCAs and the countries to overcome their vulnerabilities. A prayer for hope also being sent out to Egypt for young staff and volunteers in Laos, in Cambodia, Indonesia, and Malaysia. And a prayer for volunteers in Hungary and praying for the Peru and the Colombia YMCAs. Thank you all for, for sharing these prayers and these messages of hope. And the closing of this session does not mean that we will stop praying for one another. We will continue to pray for one another and to also check in on one another during this time as we continue to encourage each other and share hope with one another. And may the Lord graciously hear us. I want to thank you all very much for joining us on this maiden ecumenical service. And I trust that you have been encouraged and you have been refreshed 
through the word of God that we have shared the scripture readings, the prayers and the messages of hope and the music as well. We will have another service on the 17th of June, um, also uh, online and here on Facebook Live and on other platforms. And this will be communicated on email and on our social media platform. So please plan and save the date 17th June at the same time and plan to join us and have your friends and your colleagues join us um, in prayer and in, in time of reflection. So let us take some time to pray blessings over each other on the Facebook live comment section as we, as we end this session. And as we end it, we end it with a special song from Elevation Church in the US. Elevation Church started their services at Keith YMCA in Charlotte, North Carolina, USA. And this church has, got, has grown to be a very vibrant and influential fellowship around the world. And, and the Elevation Church is still continues to support the YMCA in Charlotte and therefore are a, are a very important part of the YMCA family there. And now they join the global family. The song is The Blessing. And I welcome you to receive the words um, of the song for yourself uh, personally as they are spoken and sung to you wherever you are. And once again, I welcome you to share uh, blessings and messages of encouragement to one another on the Facebook Live. Thank you so much. Um, for your time and God bless you. Enjoy the song and let's see one another again um, on June 17th.